In this video, we're going to do a few more examples of problems involving the conservation of momentum. Just as a recap, conservation of momentum was for the following situation. We had a system, one, two, more objects, and the system is isolated. So there's no net external force. Nothing from the outside is pushing or pulling on anything in our system. That's an isolated system. And what we discovered was that in such a case, the momentum of the system has to remain constant. That's the law of the conservation of momentum. Now, the momentum can be shifted around. So one object may have a decrease in momentum, and another object may have a corresponding increase in momentum. But the total has to stay constant. And that helps us uh, figure out some answers for some problems. So we did an example of a bullet being shot from a gun. Um, the gun bullet system was isolated. Uh, there was no net external force. Gravity is acting downward, but we assume that something or somebody is holding it upward, so that cancels. Uh, and there's no horizontal, uh, there's no horizontal force, um, at least initially. Now, once the gun is fired, the, the hand holding the gun is going to have to push back. But initially, the, the hand is not pushing horizontally on the gun. So it was an isolated system. The gun and the bullet together was an isolated system. So the momentum before the bullet is fired has to equal the momentum after the bullet is fired. The firing of the bullet is an internal force, and that's going to mean a change in momentum internally, but the overall sum of the momentums has to be constant. Of course, the initial momentum of the system was zero because both the gun and the bullet were not moving at first. But that means that the momentum after the bullet is fired also has to stay at zero. But now the bullet has momentum after it's fired in the positive direction, so the gun is going to have to have momentum in the negative direction after the bullet is fired. And it's going to have to have the same amount of momentum so that it cancels back to zero. So we worked that out. We had the momentum of the bullet momentum of the gun has to equal zero because that's what the momentum started at initially and we solved for the velocity of the gun because we had everything else and we got that the gun has to go backward with a speed of 1.9 meters per second so that was a typical application of momentum conservation so we're going to try a few more examples here's our first example uh, and what I want you to do is just pause the video and read it and start thinking about it and then uh, we'll work on the solution. Okay, I'm going to draw uh, a picture that goes along with this. Okay, so here we go. So I have a before and an after picture. So before we have a bullet coming at a block of wood. The bullet has an initial velocity, which is 580 meters per second. I'm writing that as VA comma I, the I for initial. And um, we have a bullet and a block, so I can't label. I'm going to label the bullet A and the block B. Unfortunately, they both are starting with B. So A will be for bullet, B will be for block. Of course, the block is not moving. Now, afterward, the situation is the bullet has gone through the block, and it's moving with a speed, and that's what we're, um, or we're given that, 340 meters per second. So that's VA final. And we want to know the velocity of the block, because presumably the block is going to move. Um, because the bullet just went through it. And, you know, of course, we're expecting the bullet to be moving to the right because the bullet went through it from left to right. And we'll call that VB final. So again, B for block. Okay, so now this is an isolated system. The bullet and the block, it's a one-dimensional problem. It's only horizontal, and there's no other forces acting on it horizontally. So an isolated system. And so we must have conservation of momentum. So the initial momentum of the system has to equal the final momentum of the system. Unlike the earlier example, the initial momentum of the system is not zero. The bullet was moving beforehand. So we have uh, the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet initially plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block initially is going to equal the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet 
final plus mass of bullet velocity oops little mistake there sorry I meant to say the velocity a comma F the velocity of the bullet final I'm saying bullet but I'm writing B because bullet starts with B um, plus the mass of the bullet times the velocity yeah plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block final and this is what we're looking for and we have everything else of course this right here is zero the block is not moving initially okay so we're looking for this so we can solve for it and then plug numbers in so I'm going to subtract over this term so we have M A V A I minus M A V A F equals M B V B F and then we'll just uh, divide by M B and that's an expression for the velocity of the block final okay so then we plug in all the numbers and we have them all just fast forwarding that I've entered all the numbers in and that comes out to 0 0.58 meters per second so that should be the velocity of the block it's not moving super fast but it is going to have some velocity after the bullet goes through it it is positive which makes sense um, as we drew the picture the block should be moving to the right so it makes sense that we got a positive answer and there we go here's a, another example another problem that we want to try so again pause the uh, video and and read this and make sure you understand the question and then we'll get started on the solution in fact maybe you could try to do the solution first and then see the solution okay start on the solution and I've drawn in uh, two terrible pictures the before and the after so before we have the boy the man and the boy standing next to each other not moving and they're on a uh, frictionless surface and they push off of each other and now the man's going to the left and the boy's going to the right could have had them going the other way um, that's your choice and yeah so we want to figure out how fast the boy is moving we know how fast the man is moving okay so again horizontally speaking there's just the, the system is the man and the boy in fact maybe I'll write that the system here is the man plus the boy and there are no external forces acting um, certainly not horizontally no nothing outside of the man and the boy all the forces coming internally the, they're pushing off of each other nothing from the outside now vertically there is external forces there's the there's gravity and there's the normal force from the surface but they're gonna cancel so even vertically it is uh, no net force so this is definitely an isolated system and so their momentum must be constant so we have initial momentum equals final momentum for the system as a whole now initially the momentum is clearly zero neither of them are moving okay and then afterward we're gonna have the mass of the man times the velocity of the man plus the mass of the boy times the velocity of the boy and we're looking for the velocity of the boy we have the other three okay so we solve for that and um, check your algebra there I did it in one quick step I subtracted over this term as a negative over to the other side and then I divide it by the MB so I think this is what we'll get okay plug in the numbers so I've done that now really important here is uh, because I chose to have the man going to the left and the boy going to the right and presumably I'm I have the right as the positive direction and the left as the negative direction the velocity for the man has to go in as negative so negative 0 0.30 meters per second okay and so now there's a negative just from the algebra and then there's a negative for that VM so actually the answer is going to be positive which makes sense because we expect the boy to be going to the right and the answer turns out to be 0 0.78 
meters per second. And it makes sense that the boy would be going faster than the man because he weighs less. So to have the same amount of momentum, he has to have an amount of momentum to counteract the man's momentum. He needs to be going faster because he weighs less to have the same amount of momentum. Okay, so that's how that would work, and that's the answer. One more example. Again, read the problem, and then we'll talk about it. Maybe try it yourself first, but we'll, we'll do the solution in just a second. Okay, here we go. I've drawn the before and the after picture. So we have a boy um, standing on a strip of cardboard, which is on ice. And at first, nobody's moving. Nothing's moving. Um, now the boy starts running, let's say, to the right and he's moving 6 meters per second relative to the cardboard. We'll have to talk about how we deal with that. But the boy's going to be moving to the right. He's going to try to run this way. Of course, what's going to happen is that the cardboard is going to slip underneath him, and the cardboard is going to start going back to the left. So that's what we have to work out is exactly what's happening. And um, how fast is the boy really moving uh, you know, relative to the ice. Like if we were standing to the side of all this, how fast would we see the boy moving? He's moving six meters per second on the cardboard, but the cardboard's sliding backward. So really he's not going to be quite moving that fast, right? So let's say, see if we can figure this out. Now once again we have to think, do we have what's necessary for the uh, conservation of momentum to apply? The system here would be the boy plus the cardboard strip. No external outside forces, right? And so this is an isolated system. So yes, we have conservation of momentum. All these problems we've been doing have been one-dimensional, so that's made the analysis a little bit easier. And this one is also one-dimensional. OK, so once again, this is a situation where we have zero momentum at first. So if I write down PI equals PF, the initial momentum is zero. That is, you see that that's kind of common uh, in these problems, although not, it doesn't have to be that way, like in the bullet going through the wood problem. But yeah, we have zero momentum before, and so we should have zero momentum afterward. Okay, so let's see. Now, we have to talk about the relative to the cardboard idea. The boy's moving six meters per second on the cardboard, but not relative to the ice. So. From outside of the system, the boy is moving with a speed of, let's call it VB for boy, and the cardboard is VC, going back this way. Now the thing is, um, the way we take into account that the 6 meters per second is relative to the cardboard, VB is not 6 meters per second. But what we can say is that VB is going to be the velocity of the cardboard plus 6 meters per second. So however fast the cardboard is moving, and you know presumably that's going to be a negative velocity back this way, the boy is going to be moving 6 meters per second faster than that, plus 6. So that's, that's, that's what it means to be going 6 meters per second relative to the cardboard. It's the speed of the cardboard plus 6 is the quote-unquote true velocity of the boy. Okay, so that's how you take that into account, and it's the first time we're seeing that, but I wanted to show that to you. All right, so we have mass of boy times velocity of boy plus mass of cardboard times velocity of cardboard. That's the total momentum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this in now for VB. So mass of boy times parentheses speed of cardboard plus 6 meters per second plus MCVC. And this still equals 0. Now I guess what we can do now is solve for VC. That's the only variable here that we don't know. We know MC and we know MB. So we'll solve for VC. Now once we know VC, we can plug it in here and that'll give us VB. Okay. So doing a little bit of algebra here, I can multiply, I can distribute the MB into the parentheses, so I get MBVC plus uh, 6 meters per second times MB plus MCVC. 
equals zero. Uh, I'm going to bring this term over to the other side, minus 6.00 meters per second mb equals, and then these other two terms, the first and the third term, I'll just factor out the vc. And then I can divide by that over to the other side. So I get minus parentheses 6 meters per second times mb all over mb plus mc equals vc. So we've solved for vc with a little bit of algebra. Now we plug in the numbers. And again, I'll fast forward that part. There we go. And the final answer comes out to be negative 4.69. And that would be meters per second. So that's the velocity of the cardboard strip. Negative, making sense. It's going back to the left, right? In our picture, the, the cardboard would be slipping back to the left. And pretty fast, negative 4.69 meters per second. And so then the velocity of the boy, we said, would be that plus 6, right? Because he's running 6 meters per second on a thing that is moving back the other way. So negative 4.69 meters per second plus 6.00 meters per second. It does come out to be positive, so that'll be 1.31 meters per second. He's really only moving 1.31 meters per second to the right um, because the thing he's running on is sliding underneath him. And so that would be the final answer. And that is all solved through conservation of momentum. So there you go, three more examples that really show how conservation of momentum can be used when you have an isolated system um, and you have everything but maybe one final speed, you can solve for that final speed.